guys, welcome back to Life on the Rest. Hope you guys are doing well today. It is another episode of Departures. I, I think this is a really cool series that I've had a lot of fun with. This is a magazine that I subscribe to and we're gonna be going through the watches that we find inside of this magazine. Most of them are, ad are advertisements, they're not really even stories or anything like that, but I thought that'd be a cool thing to do. Um, if you guys haven't seen the other episodes that we've shot for the Departures magazines, the ones before this, be sure to check that out. Um, we have a playlist where we have all these in. This um, uh, issue of Departures is from May, June 2020, and it is the Art, Design, and Culture Edition. I think it's got a really nice um, cover here. I think this is a pool, this is a house, um, pretty nice. And then on the back, there's um, there's a uh, Hermes uh, advertisement, so kind of cool. Um, but before we get into this uh, magazine and show you guys the watches that we found in it, be sure to hit that like button for us, um, really does help us out as well subscribe to the channel if you like these types of videos. If you like watches, you might as well subscribe to the channel. Check out our other videos where we discuss all things watches. Um, and when you do that, let me know in the comments when, you, when you've done that. So like I said, this is the departures from May and June of 2020. It's the Art, Design, and Culture Edition. Um, obviously, it's really got to focus on those three things, Art, Design, and Culture, and how they kind of um, come together. Um, the first watch, and it was really cool because it was you know one of the first pages that I, that I opened to was this big story here for advertisement from Rolex. Um, the, this is essentially an advertisement for Rolex. It's Rolex and music, and it kind of describes how Rolex is being committed to um, the arts and music being one of them. And the watch that they have here is, is the uh, Rolex Daydate Horse Perpetual with a green dial. This is a really beautiful watch. Um, it's got Roman numerals. <clears throat> I think this is one of the probably with some of the best money that you can get. This one is in white gold, so um, I like how it's a little bit more understated. Green dials are not as common as they as as you would think, um, but I really love this green dial. Uh, day day functions, which is obviously great. You can find some really beautiful, um, beautiful vintage day dates for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, the flute bell is beautiful. Romans are super, super classic. And obviously it's Rolex's connection with uh, with music so that was the first watch we saw next one was a watch that we've seen in the last uh, edition of this show and that is the um, the Panerai Luna Rossa AC 75 for the America's Cup so if you don't know we covered it in the last episode um, of this um, of the departures series that we have but this is the um, Luna Rossa uh, AC75. This here is also the Luna Rossa. This is a boat that's being that's partaking in the America's Cup, and this watch was made um, for this um, for the participants and an inspiration from that boat. The um, material of this watch is actually the same the material that's used uh, in in the creation of this boat. Um, we covered in this last one, but what I did find kind of cool, and I, I did a little bit more research, is the Laboratory the TID. Now this is essentially the laboratory of ideas for Panerai, which is essentially, um, it's their kind of R&D, um, it's their um, R&D kind of lab where they really focus on um, innovation and moving watchmaking forward, which I really appreciate because I think um, sometimes people can rest on their laurels and, and I think this is a nice representation of how um, a company is not doing that. All right, um, the next watch is a ladies watch. It is from Chopard. It's a really beautiful um, Chopard. It's from the L'Or de Diamant collection. So watches and diamonds or horology and diamonds. You can see it's really a ton of diamonds on this watch. Really beautiful kind of sunburst inner dial here with Chopard written on. And then you've got the Roman numerals there. Uh, blue strap, which is nice. I, I like blue straps. Um, I think it's a really elegant watch for, for a lady to wear. Obviously, diamonds are gonna probably be enjoyed by, by the, the wear, should be enjoyed by the wearer because there's quite a few of them. Um, for me, this is a little bit too much, but I'm not someone who is gonna wear this watch, so um, you never really know. Um, I will say though, this watch uh, retails for about 40,000 US dollars, which is on the more expensive side, but it's a very elegant, elegantly um, made watch. Um, I just would be for my taste. <laughs> So that's a really cool one. The next is a watch that, or a watch company that features a lot in this series. They really do focus their, a lot of their advertisements in this magazine. And that is none other than Richard Millet. This is the 67, uh, RM67-01. 
Um, this one is, you can see, Richard Miller's like um, kind of campaign for their advertisements is to have a, a some type of object here that, that um, the color scheme kind of matches what the watch is. And this one they used a snake, but I think they're really going for this kind of uh, golden brown um, color. It's kind of what they're trying to get at here with this advertisement. Um, let's see if I can get it so you can see nicely. It's a really beautiful watch. Um, so this one has um, kind of a golden brown case, so probably um, gold, and then they've got a bunch of diamonds on the outside, taking the inspiration from the color of this snake. Um, this is actually, this um, RM is actually known as the extra uh, slim. I think one of the, the criticisms with Richard Miles is the way that they fit on your wrist. Um, they are a little bit bigger, and this was a, little, a way to try and find one that's a little bit slimmer. Um, I will say it looks, from, from what I can tell when people put it on their wrists, it looks a lot, very, very comfortable, very, very wearable. There's a date function at five o'clock, which is obviously gonna be very useful. Um, and the movement is made out of titanium, like many of the other RMs that we've discussed that, that have been in this magazine <clears throat> in, in other editions of this. I think it's a really beautiful watch. Um, I, I don't think I would go with the diamonds. Uh, I think there are other references that have um, that have less diamonds, and I think that would be more just to my taste. Um, but it's a beautiful watch nonetheless. The next is the uh, RM07. Uh, we've discussed this one quite in depth. Um, we've, we've, it's been on this um, series quite a few times. It's been in this magazine quite a few times. Um, but it's a, it's a really beautiful watch, completely white, got an inner, inner kind of circle here with diamonds. The hour markers actually look like teeth to me, which I think is interesting. I think it's interesting that they have a beta fish here as the inspiration. I guess maybe it's for the crown, which is a little bit of a lighter color, uh, maybe like a little bit of a red. Um, if you wanted to see where we covered the, the RM07, uh, we put in our other episodes to check that out. I won't go too much in detail, but it's a cool variation of the 07. The next is a lady's watch. And it is, um, from their style section here. This is the this is the page that I'm looking at here. Um, let me make sure you guys can see that. So you can see there's a watch on that individual's wrist and you can't really make it out, but this is, um, this is the uh, Bulgari Diva's Dream Watch. It's actually got a it's actually got a peacock kind of inspiration inspiration for the dial. <clears throat> it looks like it's on this gold bracelet. It's really, really beautiful. Um, I think it's more about the looks of this watch, to be honest. I think it's more about how it fits in with the rest of the jewelry. I think this is a lot of jewelry to be wearing on one on one's um, arm here, but um, you know, each of their own. It's a cool watch and thought I would just make sure that you guys saw it. <clears throat> the next page was really cool. So we actually have a spread here of of um, three wrists and three watches. I'll start with this one up here. Um, make sure that you guys can see it. So we'll start with the one on the top. That watch there is the Blanc Pas Villaret Complete Calendar. So it is a full perpetual calendar from Blanc Pas, um, or complete annual calendar, excuse me. It's running on the caliber 6650 or 6654 from Blanc Pas. And I think it's just a really beautiful watch. It's on this like interesting little like gold strap, which I think I would prefer it on a, on a leather bracelet, but I think it's a really, really beautiful watch. Um, make sure you guys can see it. Yeah. A beautiful moon phase on it. Uh, beautiful moon phase, this little curved hand for the, for the date. And um, obviously, uh, day of the week, month, moon phase. Um, absolutely beautiful. Um, don't know if I, again, I, I don't know if I would put it with all this jewelry, but um, regardless, uh, it's their choice, right? Um, then this wrist, wrist here is the Omega Lady Matic. Make sure you guys can see a close up of that. So the Omega Lady Matic. Um, this is 
got a mother of pearl dial with a coaxial movement it's actually the caliber 8520 again really beautiful watch from omega i like the fact that it's actually running on a coaxial movement because i think sometimes watch manufacturers think that ladies are not going to be interested in mechanical watches but i think this is a good example of them actually exploring that uh, beautiful diamonds around the, around the bezel of the watch diamond hour markers and he's almost like um leaf shaped hands which i think is very very interesting um a cool watch for sure and then on the other side of the page is um a very nice watch um this is actually a watch that uh, i wouldn't mind wearing uh, out of all of these i'd probably wear this one and this is the breguet uh, marine equation of time reference 5887 um, this is a really um really this packs a lot of punch so just to tell you the the complications it's got an equation of time a perpetual calendar and a turbulent um, so let me make sure you guys see a close-up of it here you can see it on this guy's wrist um this watch actually takes its inspiration from uh, the first marine equation of time watch that uh, abraham louis Breguet made um, we have actually done a he's part of our series where we discuss um uh, some of the uh, legendary watchmakers of the past and um, we've actually made a series about uh, Brigue so I won't go too in depth into his creation and his history but I would recommend that you check out his video where we discuss his first uh, equation of time watch again really beautiful watch white dial turbulent at five o'clock and obviously the complications that I mentioned it's a really beautiful watch and it's on a brown leather strap so nothing can really get nothing can really beat that, that type of watch and then the last watch, and this was really cool to see because it came out pretty recently. And that is, um, this is a story about the golden hour, which is, um, the, the tagline is, in a historic Swiss village, a new high-tech destination beckons watchmaking aficionados. So, um, it's about um, a tiny town called Les Brassus. Um, and uh, this is one of the ateliers that, um, uh, design this this architecture um and um this watch we've we've covered it in depth in a video so again check out check out our video about this but this is um a a, chrono uh, a chronograph from automat pillier two-tone chronograph with a gold dial a really beautiful watch um we like i said we've covered it it's on a brown strap a uh, blue blue chronograph hand two-toned case um I'd recommend you check out our video where we discuss that. I won't go too in depth into that or the story, but um, I recommend uh, checking that out. Um, just, I just want to make sure that I, I thought I saw something else. Yeah, and and just so that you, just so I can kind of make sure that I understand, explain this is. Um, this is a museum that is uh, commemorating Automat Piguet's uh, history, and this watch was actually released in conjunction with that. So, um, this is a cool story. If you don't, if you have a magazine, definitely check this out. Um, yeah. So, those are the watches that we found in this magazine. Again, this is the this is the um, the May June edition of Departures. Some really cool watches. Some new watches that we haven't seen. Some old watches from Richard Millet that we've seen. Put some really cool watches in this magazine. Um, if you haven't seen our other, <coughs> other episodes where we discuss um, the other editions of the Departures magazine that we've we've looked at, be sure to check those out. Also, if you didn't turn the beginning video, be sure to like this video for us. It really does help us out. Like like this video for this um, edition of Departures, as well as subscribe to the channel if you like these types of videos, <coughs> or if you've seen some of our other videos and would like to uh, be notified when when these uh, when these when we upload and, and release videos about watches. Also, don't forget to check us out on social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok most recently. Check us out there. And with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time.